All right, this is What is this, Ladita? Hey, everybody. It's Thanksgiving. Thanks, everyone. And we're here this fine Wednesday for another show and tell with me, Lady Ada, and Mr. Lady Ada, who's doing camera control, and all of our wonderful guests, all the people in the making community who are showing off what they're working on this fine, cold, almost winter evening. We've got some wonderful guests that we're going to call on you. We're going to get out of here at 7.50 so we can do our next show. Uh, thank you, everybody, for showing up. Uh, let's kick it off with some Food Peeps, JP, with the overhead. Hey, JP. All right. Hey, everybody. So uh, I have a busted camera. So the only camera you get to see right now is my project camera. But hey, that's why everyone's tuning in anyway, right? So here we have the project I built today on my live stream and partly the, the previous week. So this I'm calling the Neo Matrix Mark I. I even burnished it into the back there, Neo Matrix Mark I. So you can see I've got a little piezo buzzer in here. I built this little laser cut case. Uh, and what I've got inside is there's a Metro, our little uh, three by four matrix uh, phone keypad. And this is a set of three Neo segment displays, which are uh, Neo pixels uh, and little diffusers and light blocks or blockers. And there's a little library. You can talk to them uh, in Arduino. That's very convenient for doing character displays. And then I've got a couple potentiometers on here and a switch. So uh, this is something that I think you could use for a puzzle. You could use it as a controller for something like a CNC machine. You could maybe build a step sequencer for audio with it. Um, one idea I had with a friend of mine was to use it to program NeoPixels. So you could pick from animations and uh, colors and things like that. So let me show you with the color thing. It's kind of cool. I've got it set up to show the hue uh, of the uh, three digits here, as well as the value on a uh, 360 degree hue wheel. So I can run through colors here. And I can also run through values, which is how bright it is. That's neat. Uh, and then I'm going to use those values to make really cool bleepy noises. And then I also set something up in here so that uh, you could use this as an enter key. So let's say you've entered in the code you need check to see if that's the proper code, and then you get the next clue in your mystery, which uh, I'm noticing now my display is kind of mirrored uh, in Google. So it's oh, no, we see it. We see it the right way. Oh, do you see the right way? I see it the weird way. OK. I always so think that, the tip is the more shirt says Tim, but it really says MIT. I oh, went to Tim. Hi, Tim. Hi, Tim. <laughs> so that's the, uh, the Neo Matrix Mark I, and I've got some cool uh, laser etchings and cutting uh, files that I've put into the learning guide I'm working on. and. Uh, I think that uh, once once that's up there, I'd be really interested to see the sorts of things people do with this. Because it's kind of like a little kit for just uh, playing around with software once you've got it built. You can do a lot of interesting thing in, things in software with these inputs and outputs. Neo, pix and, pixel, and spell. <laughs> that's it. All right. Well, thank you, JP. And have a great holiday. Thank you. And happy Thanksgiving, everyone. All right. Phil B, what you got going on this week? Hello there. Um, I have an update to a, a project I, I previously showed off here. Let's see if I can uh, switch cameras. OK. Does that work? You see yeah, a lot of these really good. <laughs> yeah. um, this was uh, using um, DMA on the uh, Metro M0 to drive a crap ton of NeoPixels. Um, one of the downsides normally with NeoPixels is uh, they, they communicate very slowly. And it doesn't matter like how powerful your processor is, just everything grinds to a halt when you're communicating with them. Um, DMA kind of offloads that, and so you have your whole processor, you know, accessible to you, so you can do some really elaborate code, or you can walk and chew gum at the same time, and everything. Um, we've been experimenting with the M4 chip. Uh, we have a Metro M4 prototype, and so I, I got the same code working on the M4, which is pretty exciting because uh, the, the registers, the peripherals work very differently on the chip. So getting the same library working on both was was uh, pretty important. Um, but I had a, a, oh, hey, wait a minute moment uh, where I realized on the M4 chip, you have twice the number of peripherals that I'm using to drive these NeoPixels. And so um, you can <gasps> actually do more NeoPixels on the M4. Uh, oh, my goodness. 16 channels concurrently, though at the moment we only have 13 of those pins are like wired up to the GPIO, you know, on the board edge. Um, so who knows? We might rearrange things so we can get a few more. Um, but it's just it 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 will let you do um, just a, a crazy number of NeoPixels with like no no processor uh, 
overhead. You can do, you know, whatever ray trace glass spheres or something with all that <laughs> power now. Well, this is beautiful. Thanks for tweeting it because when it's late at night, I'm like, I wonder what Phil's doing. And it's like, there's usually good music and good lights. <laughs> cool. Yeah, you bet. So um, anyway, I'm, I'm, you know, kind of polishing it. It's horrible code right now, but it proves the idea works. And uh, I'm going to make it so normal people can use it. We got like a Stargate thing going on over here, and then we've got like a Battlestar Galactica. Gaius Baltar was a little nicer. Maybe he'd have a room like this instead yeah, yeah, of the, yeah. the one where all the robots do stuff. Anyways, all right. Well, thank you so much. We'll be in happy holidays. Thank you. You too. All right. Next up. Hey, Sophie. Hi. Is my mic working now? Yes. Yes. Hey. Okay. Hi. I, so it's I'm back with this, but it's not actually Selfie Bot. It is SelfieBot V2. Right. I'm calling it Son of SelfieBot. And the, so what I did was I kind of redesigned a little bit of it so that it's a little bit easier to explain in a guide because I'm writing a guide about it. Yeah. So the first thing I did was um, I made it battery powered. So the last SelfieBot had like three cords coming out of it. So this one has no cords coming out of it. Um, so that's a 7.2 volt battery for like RC cars. Um, and it can print and everything. And I'm so glad that, that works. I was a little nervous about getting that going. Um, and then the other thing that I changed is the case was laser cut laminated plywood. And this one is 3D printed. So only the panels, the front and the back and the middle panel are laser cut and the walls are all 3D printed. So that just makes it a little bit easier to build, a little bit lighter, and it's not so expensive. The plywood is really expensive when you're cutting like eight layers of it. So um, so that is, I think it makes it a pretty easy project to build. I mean, it's complicated and long, but it's way more doable than laser cutting everything. Um, and then there's just a couple other things I wanna do before I'm done with the guide. Um, Mostly, I want to make a, a layer to engrave on the laser cut panels that is a diagram so you can see exactly what the holes are. Because when you pull it out of the laser cutter, it just looks like like this, and it's just like a ton of holes. So I'd love for these to say, like, raspberry pie screw holes, and wires through here, and thermal printer in here. So that's what I'm on, and I'll be done with that soon. Hopefully, I can't wait. <laughs> All right, great work. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sophie. Oh, we'll send you a sticker too, of course. Oh, awesome. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for All right, next up, Rebecca. Hello, Rebecca. Welcome back. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Um, I don't have a particular project, but I do have a lot to share because I've been in two different classrooms in the last three days. Um, <laughs> so I, that's been really exciting. Um, on Saturday, I can't count, that's been more than three days. But on Saturday, um, I was at a conference speaking to science teachers um, all about Circuit Playground. Um, and they all went home with Circuit Playgrounds and they were really happy. Uh, uh, but I had pictures that I sent to you guys of um, teachers playing with make code and getting up in coding and be like, I don't know how to do any of this. And like, I don't even know how to use my cell phone. And yet they were able to code, um, which is really, really awesome. And then earlier today, I was at an elementary school working with an art class on using Circuit Playground Express to do little art installations. Uh, so that, that was really exciting. And that, <laughs> that's the gist of what I have to share. I like how awesome. you're, you're teaching the teachers and then also teaching the kids. So yeah. you, got, you got both, you got, you got all the bases covered. <laughs> and the bases could be a Circuit Playground project yes. too. All right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thanks and so um, we sent those photos along to the Make Code team at Microsoft. Um, I'll try to remember to, to follow up because uh, we have to. We'd ask if the teachers are okay. We'll do a blog post, but I'll, I'll get with you on email on that to make sure it's okay if we are. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. All right. Next up, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Hi. Hey. Hello. Hey, everybody. Um, so I am sharing uh, an update. Here's the last version of the thermometer. Um, it's, it was on the radiator, so it's reading it. Uh, it works. <laughs> yeah, it works. It's 80 degrees. So here's the new version. I worked mainly on the case today. Um, so it's going to be a little more interactive. Um, the last version, the kids would, the teacher would turn on the thermometer, and it would be on at her discretion. 
But this one, I want the kids to interact with it. So they're going to hit this video game button now. Um, and then it will display the temperature for 30 seconds uh, and also log it. So we can keep track of how, how much the kids are using it. Um, I also added this really uh, satisfying toggle switch so I could turn it on and off. And it's going to be rechargeable. So uh, guide coming soon. This is great. How are you? Cool. And when you're logging it, um, how is it logging it? So I haven't got that far yet. I, today I just got it to read um, the two sensors over IC2. Um, but I'd like a comma separated value file. So, yeah. um, and then I'll save it to the flash on the Feather Express, I guess. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. If you ever want to make an, a version down there, because you already have two so far, um, we can send you out some Adafruit products that would get it to work with Adafruit IO, like something that's wireless or whatever. So you could um, you could chart it over time and stuff like that too. That that would be pretty neat. I just started watching the the cloud the cloud video, so the DigiKey and yeah, we're filming the next one on Saturday. <laughs> oh, awesome! So yes, that would be a great third version. Okay, yeah, drop us um, one. You get a sticker, of course. Um, drop a note to support at Adafruit.com, and then email PT at Adafruit. And we'll get you set up for a bunch of huzzas and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Work. And we have Adafruit IO Plus now, and I think I can start giving out free Plus accounts. It's always free, but then there's the the Plus version, so you can log even more temperature. And regular awesome. temperature. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye. 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 All right. Next up, GB. Hello, GB. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Hello. All right. Great. So, um, so I built a little LED matrix. It's on my floor right now. So just let me pick it up. Oh, cool. Okay. So my friend Timothy um, has actually helped me with. It getting the LEDs, he's um, Skyping me right now in the background, so. <laughs> hey, Tim. Hey, Tim. Um, <laughs> I'm wearing your shirt, Tim. It says Tim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like I have a piece of paper. Oh, shoot, I almost dropped it. Um, I have a piece of paper that lets you see it better, so it's pretty much powered by an Arduino, like every project ever. Oh, neat. Um, it's kind of messy, but if you put a piece of paper over it. Oh, hey. That's nice. It has little letters it spells out. It says hello world right now. Oh, cool. Nice work. It might be backwards, but um, it's pretty much, I did all the programming myself. You can change the text it is. It's pretty much the way it works is it has a ton of definitions in the code, like mm -hmm. 50 definitions, because it has to have the text scrolling. Yeah. And um, then you just have your Arduino with has uh, eight cables on it, which is good, because I'm planning on actually just building a breadboard Arduino using a shift register and a hex inverter. So I don't have to keep using tons of pins. I can use three pins and turn it into eight. With the hex yep. inverter. So I have like a whole setup for this, making a portable one with a nine volt battery yep. and a voltage regulator. So you can have like messages on your desk saying like, I'll be back at like five o'clock or something. That's it. That's okay. cool. Well, congratulations, yeah. that's really nice. And then for folks who show projects, that's always a good tip. A, a piece of paper will diffuse it because it's like webcam. Sometimes they can see it, sometimes they can't, but that works out really well. Yeah. All so, right, G yeah, GB, email support at adafruit.com and we will send you out an SEO on the show until sticker. All right, nice. Uh, All right, thank okay. you, JB. Okay. GB. GB. GB, yeah. sorry. All right, next up. Chris. Hello, Chris Young. How are you? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, you sound hey. great. Okay. Uh, two years ago, I made a little 3D printed Christmas ornament, and it occurred to me the other day that it was just about the right size to sit on top of a circuit playground express. So I made a slightly customized version of it and cut some notches for the USB port and for the power plug and resized it and there it is and I've got my little little pixel animation code running on it and uh, it makes a nice little uh, desktop Christmas tree. That's beautiful. I love the so diffusion through the plastic. Yeah, the, the webcam really isn't doing it justice right now. It looks a lot cooler in person. <laughs> I've got a YouTube video now, YouTube video that I, that I did with my iPhone that looks a little bit better than that. And it's all on my blog at tech.cyborg5.com. And uh, I'll, I'll post the code. The, the thing files are on Thingiverse right now. I will post the code, but I want to do a Circuit Python version of it as well. It's my old Arduino version running there, but I, I thought I might as well do a Circuit Python as well. So yeah. uh, that's all. Just want to say, I'm, of all the things I'm thankful for, I'm thankful for Adafruit. Oh. 
And uh, the whole maker community has been really supportive me again. I'm just sick about you on Thanksgiving. Uh, so, thank you so much, Chris. Thanks, uh, Chris. Have a we have these snow globes that we're going to put it, the circuit playgrounds fit in there pretty nice. So we're going to make little snow globes with like eight of in there and we'll put little resistors flying around. So maybe oh, we'll have a project cool. to show um, in the next couple of weeks. Holidays of lights and circuit playgrounds go well together. All right. All right. Thanks so much, Thank Chris. Thank you. All right. Next up, Daniel. Hello, Daniel. Hey, how you guys doing? Good. Hey. Hey, I first want to first thank you guys for the uh, circuit playgrounds you gave my, my class uh, about three or four weeks ago. Uh, I got them all in the class. They're all using them, uh, and I got projects due next week. So I'm hoping that uh, I can get a couple of the kids on the show and yeah, that'd be great. And show off. They've got we've got wizards, we've got uh, superheroes, we got Indiana Jones, all sorts of really cool stuff that the kids are doing. Oh wow! So it should be good. Um, awesome. And then um, my dad won this a few weeks ago. So. Right. right. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was I was called in and won the uh, the little. Bluetooth keyboard for you guys, and I said, oh, yeah. I'm working on an arcade machine. And Lady Ada said, well, when you get it done, come on the show. And so, here, you hey. go. here it is. Tell us about it. Yes, so it's uh, it's based on Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, it's based on uh, the Picade hat from Pi Maroni and the Picade PCB, put both together so I get two players. Um, got all the buttons from you guys, they all light up. Um, I took an old monitor I had and just set it inside. Um, and then print it off uh, marquee, and everything is, is modular, so I can take everything off. Um, everything's press fit with, with magnets, um, so it can all be reused later on, so I didn't have to solder anything, luckily, on this one. So, uh, on, all, the, all the buttons light up, comes up, so I've got all sorts of, of games for the kids to play. So, uh, Daniel's assistant, what's your favorite game to play on the arcade? Um, I don't know. Glad she likes. Yeah, that's a cool on. game. I like that one. That's cool. Arkanoid and stuff. Okay, cool. Well, that you're that's awesome. They have an arcade. You don't just spend quarters either. That's you right. can save your quarters and just uh, have fun. Yes, that's fun. It's pretty fun. So outstanding. Well, email supported data for duck. I will send you two as seen on the show and tell stickers both of you are showing your projects. And thank you, Daniel, for um, having these kids work on some some fun stuff. You never know what's going to spark a young person onto a, a lifelong adventure of making and coding but this is this is one attempt so thank you for doing it. <laughs> thank you guys for circuit playground for great Yay. okay all right well i think we got to everybody wow. this was good all right well thank you everybody thank um, you everybody yeah we'll see everybody on um ask an engineer in a in a few minutes and once again thank you for making you. this not only our best half an hour this week but this entire year and all the time we did show best so, year ever yeah well, every year when we go through like what are we thankful for this is um usually uh top at least the top three. This is a good time because it's like yeah. we spent all year working really hard, and now it's now it's time to relax with friends and family, and yeah. like you maybe you don't, aren't at work for the next couple of days, so you can build some projects, yeah. get, get caught up on some making, yeah. some gaming. All year we make stuff, so when you're home, you can make you can stuff. Make stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Sophie. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Phil B. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Christian. Okay, we'll see everybody next week. And happy holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Bye. Have a safe and wonderful holiday from us. All right.